Hello everyone, I'm Tegan Evans. And I'm Brooke Heron with the Stragget Media Network in the heart of downtown Louisville. We wanna give you updates on events happening the week of November 14th through November 20th, along with sports and weather in Eastern Stark County. Tuesday is open mic night at Muggswigs in downtown Canton. Come out and enjoy the best Canton has to offer in coffee, tea, and local entertainment on our open mic night. Open mic night gives local talented people the chance to come out and play in front of a fabulous crowd surrounded by all of the coffee and tea you could possibly want. Bring yourself, friends, neighbors, and instruments on Tuesday nights for a good time. On Wednesday, North Canton will be having their farmer's market at the North Canton Civic Center. The North Canton Farmer's Market offers year-round access to a wide range of seasonal produce, pastured meats, preserved items, baked goods, coffee, maple syrup, honey, live plants, sweet treats, books, crafts, and more. The market will open Wednesday from 3 to 6 p.m. Also, there will be food trucks, children's activities and games, live music, cooking demonstrations, and so much more. Also on Wednesday, there will be a karaoke night at the Tilt Bar and Grill. Sing like nobody is watching and show off your voice. There will be plenty of fun, and Wednesday night is Wings Special Night, so check it out. On Thursday in Canton, the Glass Garden of Canton will be holding a free glass blowing demonstration. Pull up a seat and watch the talented glass blowers in action as they make a variety of glass art in their hot shop. This event will happen from 5 to 8 p.m. There is no reservation necessary. Another event set to happen in Canton on Thursday is the Holiday Light Up the Park at Stadium Park. Kick off the holiday season as we celebrate 23 years of lighting up Stadium Park with more than 50 holiday displays. Sing along to your favorite holiday tunes with the Arts Academy at Summit Choir. Enjoy hot chocolate and cookies while you wait for Santa to arrive at 6.20 p.m. Also on Thursday will be the Kukina Demo. Everything Pumpkin will take place at Dravasi Vineyard. This event offers fun and inspiring educational experiences marked by delicious food and memorial wines. This demonstration cooking class and the Villa Grande will be led by Meg Feller, owner of Lemon Leaf Catering, specializing in elegant events, custom cooking classes, and private diner parties. Study Chef Meg's technique as she prepares a menu of antiquing dishes during this enhanced dining event. Enjoy a generous portion of each course accompanied by a glass of wine. Cash bar with wine and beer also available. You can pre-order additional bottles of wine to have ready at your table by using the link below. You won't go home hungry after this delectable demo. You'll also receive a recipe pack packet to help you recreate your Kukina experience at home. On Friday at the Cory Golf Club and Venue, there will be live music. Join us for a fun night out. Grab your friends and family to enjoy live music and our large heated and covered patio. Relaxing on wine with drinks and dinner specials reservations are encouraged as we typically have a wait list. This Friday from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m., it will be the Becky Flynn Trio. For reservations, call 330-488-3178, extension 2. Bar seats are first come first serve. Also on Friday, the Cultural Center for the Arts will be performing Annie the Musical. It's the story you know and the songs you love. The New Direction Performing Arts Academy presents Annie live on stage November 18th through the 20th, performed by an all-kids cast on the new Cultural Center Theater in Canton. Saturday at the Forever Lawn Sport Complex at the Hall of Fame Village, the Great Lakes Fall College Soccer Showcase will take place. Men and women U14 to U19 will compete in the Great Lakes Fall College Soccer Showcase. Events are open to the public and information on times and matchups can be found on the CASA Tournament's website. Also down at the Hall of Fame Village at the Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium will be the Turkey Bowl Prep. It's an inaugural Turkey Bowl Prep on F November 19th. This is a seven versus seven adult 21 and over flag football tournament that will take place at the Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. Each team will be guaranteed two 40 minute games with officials. Registration is 300 per team. For more information or to register your team, visit the Hall of Fame website also on Saturday, the Hartville Hardware will feature the Hartville Antique Show. This is a flea market showcasing local vendors with vintage, antique, and unique items. The event will be taking place in our food court area with antique vendors selling items such as primitives, vintage toys and advertising, and so much more. If you're interested in becoming a vendor, please contact the event coordinator, Kurt Greaves, at 330-877-9860. Over in Plain Township, the third annual Gobbler Open will be hosted at Arrowhead Golf Course. There will be a four-person scramble shotgun at 12 p.m. Registration will start at 11.15 a.m. The cost is $100 per person cash. Golf dinner and skins are included in the entry fee. First, second, and third place will receive a cash prize. 
For teams, you can have one pro and three amateurs or four amateurs. Please call Todd or Madison by November 12th to sign your team up. You can reach them at 330-433-1880, extension 7. Finally on Sunday, Masterworks Pictures and an exhibit at Umstead Hall, Rachel Barton Pine's Plane will shine during Sibella's Violin Concerto. Miss Pine is known for her dazzling technique, amazing tone, and infectious joy. The second half of the performance features pictures at an exhibition by Maraski. This work originally based on pictures by artist Victor Hartman will include all new visuals in collaboration with the Canton Museum of Art and the Maslin Museum pictures from their own collections will be created to enhance the music. Check the website for further details. Over the weekend, we had something special here in downtown Louisville. Hello everyone, I'm Tegan Evans of the Stragon Media Network and we are here at the Eyes of Freedom Memorial and Display here in Louisville, Ohio. I'm here with Mike and we're going to be asking him a few questions. So kind of introduce yourself and tell us your involvement with the memorial. I, I love the Eyes of Freedom. My name is Mike Straley and I'm the Executive Director of the Eyes of Freedom Traveling Memorial. Um, really glad to be here in Louisville for Veterans Day and we travel this tribute all around the country just to salute everyone's service and their families and uh, you know we've been doing it for you know well over a decade 350 plus events and you know small town America just like Louisville is our favorite so yeah all right and then kind of tell us the background of this whole project so Lima Company 325 is a marine unit based out of Columbus Ohio uh, we deployed to Iraq in 2005 uh, fighting the insurgency there. It was a huge success. Uh, there's another kiosk over here that shows a lot of the accomplishments that happened during that time frame. Uh, but unfortunately, it came at a very tall cost. We lost a lot of Marines. And because it's a reserve unit, uh, a lot of our guys are local to Ohio. So when all of this was happening in 2005, you know, the Ohio local loss was tremendous and it became a, a huge story. And, you know, Anita, the artist uh, that created this whole thing as a mother just wanted to do something to help all of the other families. And, you know, what you see is what was created from that. She used photos from all of the family members and tried to capture them in life size as best as she could. Uh, so that their image and their story would last forever. And now we traveled all over the country trying to use their story and their image to salute everybody that's ever served. All right, well, thank you. And then one more question. How can people donate to this? Uh, you know, just coming in and seeing us in person is first and foremost. You mm -hmm. can donate right here. Uh, but we also have a website, eyesoffreedom.org, uh, and you can donate online at eyesoffreedom.org. Uh, even if you donate online, I almost have to say you still have to come in and see it. Yeah. So, uh, but we're going to be here today through 8 p.m., tomorrow noon to 10 p.m., and then Saturday 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, and I want to, uh, before I forget, I want to tell everybody that when you come in, you have to sign our uh, Eyes of Freedom event flag because at the end of that event, uh, we actually dedicate it to Louisville. So the, the event flag with everybody's signatures will stay here. All right, awesome. Well, that's all we have for tonight. Thank you again. I'm Tegan Evans, the Stragon Media Network, and we'll see you next time. That was an interesting interview. Yeah, I had a lot of fun, it was super cool. Now, let's kick it over to Paige Folk for sports. Thanks, Tegan, and I'm Paige Folk, and I'm coming to you from the Stragon Sports Studio. It's a busy weekend for sports in Stark County and in Ohio, including some local teams and OHSA playoff action. So stick around and I'll get you to update after this word from our sponsors. Beatty Sports has all of your athletic needs, specializing in corporate, school, and team apparel in-house custom embroidery and silk screening makes the Beatty Sports tradition of quality and service unbeatable. Go Leopards!
life is tough. At Notre Dame, Ohio State, and in my life thereafter, I've had to walk through situations that were as challenging as it gets. A large part of my ability to overcome the challenges were the determination and toughness I learned as a leopard athlete. Your challenge today is tough. They want to push you around and take what's yours. Fight hard and rise to the challenge to show yourself that in years to come, that as your life gets hard, you'll have the intestinal fortitude to overcome. For many years, you have trained and practiced for this moment. And show what you got. You like spending time with your family, but have you planned for when that is not possible? Guiley & Guiley provide affordable estate planning protecting you and your family. Our experience is your solution. Guiley & Guiley. We're back and it was a filled weekend of sports around Stark County in Ohio. It started off Friday night with the number two ranked Blue Streaks taking on the number three ranked Rusterville South Wildcats in a Division II Region 7, seven, re seven regional semifinal at Crater Stadium in Dover. With weather playing a factor early on, both teams were a little sluggish. Lake also had to overcome a huge injury when senior Matt Sullerberger, their 1,200 yard running back, went down on the second play of the game and never returned. But no worries, enter Will Butler, a 6'3", 215 pound safety and quarterback. Butler moves to running back and took over for the Blue Streaks with 122 yards on 24 carries and two touchdowns. Lake's defense also stepped up, holding a high-powered Wildcat offense to 155 total yards and only eight first downs. An early touchdown by Butler gave the Blue Streaks a lead 7-0, but midway through the second quarter, the Wildcats tied the game up moments later when quarterback Dominic Bertha was able to escape through the middle of the Lake defense for an 11-yard touchdown run. Lake took back the lead early in the fourth quarter in Selton Dutton's 34-yard field goal. But then the Blue Streaks defense went to work, shutting down the Wildcats offense. Butler then scored a five-yard touchdown run late in the game to put the Blue Streaks up for good, 16-7. Ty Miller then once again steals the ball with a tipped ball interception that shut the door and gave the Blue Streaks the victory. The Blue Streaks now have 12 wins, which is the second most in program history, only behind the 13 wins from the 1991 state runner-up team. Over in Mansfield at Arlen Field, the number one ranked Maslin Tigers took on the Big Walnut Eagles in another regional semifinal in Division II Region 7. After getting a punch in the mouth on a 92-yard touchdown run by Nick Severs of Big Walnut, turning the ball over on an interception and giving up a field goal, the Tigers tailed 9-0 but the Tigers would not let that rough start determine their fate. The Tigers stormed back to defeat Big Walnut 42-21. Maslin took an 11-game winning streak into the regional semifinal using physical play and giving the Eagles a heavy dose of Wilfred Harton and Darian Pringle. Harton led the Tigers with 214 yards and three touchdowns on 29 carries, including a 79-yard touchdown run. The Maslin Tigers will now face the Lake Blue Streaks in an All-Star County Regional Final matchup times and locations to be determined. In Division 4, Region 13, the West Branch Royals traveled to Clinton Heacock Stadium in Ravenna to take on Akron Butchell Griffins. The Griffins took an early 14-6 lead in the first quarter by using a balanced offense and a solid defense. This combination carried them to seven straight wins coming into the matchup. The Griffins then extended their lead to 17-6 on a 37-yard field goal but a 28-point third quarter for the Warriors led West, by West Branch quarterback DeShield, who finished 34 of 48 with 403 yards and three touchdowns, lifted the Warriors over the Griffins 41 to 33. DeShields broke two records in the game. His 33 completions are now a school record, and he now has 3,773 3 yards, which is also a school record. The victory advances them to the regional finals. In the other Division IV Region 13 Regional Semifinal, the Canton South Wildcats took on the Jefferson Area Falcons at the South Range Athletic Complex. Jefferson went into halftime with a 28-7, 28-7 thanks to running back Hitchcock. However, Canton South would battle back, but it was just too much Hitchcock as he scored five rushing touchdowns in the game. As Canton South falls in, shoot in a shootout 49-35, it was a historical season for the Wildcats and here at Stragett, we'd like to congratulate them that. The Falcons will now take on the West Branch Warriors in the regional finals. On Saturday, the Ohio State Buckeyes travel to Indiana to take on the Indiana Hoosiers. The Buckeyes offense will get back on track as the ground attack got rolling and the Buckeyes rushed for a 
season high of 340 yards to a 56 to 14 win over the Hoosiers. Even after losing Ryan Williams to a foot injury early on, who was dominating when he, car when he was carted off the field. The 147 yards on 15 carries, the Buckeyes then turned to freshman running back, Dale Dylan Hayden, a long receiver turned running back, Xavier Johnson, to carry the load. Hayden and Johnson were able to finish up where Williams left off. Quarterback CJ Stroud also threw for 297 yards and five touchdowns. The scoring was capped off when senior wide receiver Cameron Babb, perhaps one of the most popular players on the team and a leader who has overcome four ACL surgeries and multiple setbacks, finally scored a touchdown in his fifth year on the team. Next up for the Buckeyes will be the Maryland Terrapins on November 19th. Also on Saturday, the number two Mount Union Purple Raiders traveled to Berea, Ohio to take on the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets. The Purple Raiders won the AOC outright title in thrilling fashion. The Purple Raiders lead at halftime 17 to nothing. However, the Yellow Jackets were not going away quietly as they scored 21 unanswered points to lead 21 to 17 with 22 seconds left in regulation. Mount Union started a historical drive on their own 26 yard line. They had completed three passes, including a 48 yard Hail Mary tip touchdown pass from quarterback Braxton Plunk to wide receiver Wayne Ruby Jr. with no time left, giving the Purple Raiders a 23 to 21 victory. This victory secures Mount Union's automatic bid to the NCAA Division III 32 team playoff rocket, which will take place starting on November 19th. See the Mount Union Athletic website for further details. The Walsh University Cavaliers traveled to Midland, Michigan to take on the Timberwolves and Northwood University. It was a rough day for the Cavaliers as they fall 34 to 14. The Timberwolves lead in total offense, leading 354 total yards to 291. This loss drops Walsh to one tonight. Well, that's all we have time for. Keep an eye out for the Stragget Sports team as we will keep you updated on things coming up. I am Paige Folk with Stragget Sports. Now over to Aiden Carey for the weather. Hello, I'm Aiden Carey with the Stragget Media Network. I'm the weatherman and this is the weather. On Monday, we have a high of 43 degrees and a low of 28 degrees with a 7% chance of rain. On Tuesday, we have a high of 42 degrees and a low of 35 degrees with a 38% chance of rain. On Wednesday, we have a high of 38 degrees and a low of 30 degrees with a 24% chance of rain. Thursday, we have a high of 35 degrees and a low of 23 degrees with a 15% chance of snow. Friday, we have a high of 31 degrees and a low of 16 degrees with an 8% chance of rain. Saturday, it's a high of 32 degrees, low of 19 degrees, and a 3% chance of rain. Sunday, we have a high of 37 degrees and a low of 18 degrees with a 7% chance of rain. And that's the weather for this week. That's all the time we have for tonight, so stay tuned for more updates and events as they come in. Again, I'm Tegan Evans. And I'm Brooke Heron with the Stragget Media Network. Have a great day, everyone.